In this video, I will give you three strategies for finding a good Catholic spouse. These are strategies that I personally use to find my wife, who is the woman of my dreams, and they're strategies that I have seen my friends use with great success. If I were still single today, this is how I would go about finding my spouse. A quick point before we get started, I see a lot of Catholic dating videos, and a lot of them are done by single people. Nothing against them, I'm sure they're wonderful people, but you want to take advice about how to find a wife or a husband from somebody who has actually found a wife or a husband. You want to take advice from somebody who has won the game, not from somebody who's still playing. I'm going to show you now exactly what I did to find my spouse and what I would do again if I were still looking for one. On to the fun stuff. I am 100% confident that I found the woman that God intended for me. At the end of this video, I'm going to also give you a resource where you can start looking for a spouse in a very, very practical way. The first point in this video is arguably the most practical one. And if you get this right, then everything else will kind of figure itself out. And you'll be able to start finding people in your age range who are also single and faithful Catholics with little or no extra effort. Young Catholics and good spouses attend good liturgies. I have several parishes near me in Arizona where I live, and the ones that have good liturgies, the ones that have more reverence, more tradition, more solid preaching, they attract a younger crowd. And the ones that have, well, less of that, let's just say, they do not attract a younger crowd. If you want to find a good Catholic spouse, you should start by looking at church. And you should start by looking at churches that have good traditional liturgies. If you can find one of those, I guarantee you'll find a young adult community and you can get plugged in and you can start meeting people who have the same faith as you and have similar interests as you. Young people in general are just longing for tradition. They want to see the Mass done well. And if you don't believe me, go to a Latin Mass and you will see a ton of young families, a ton of young adults, and a ton of babies. They're just everywhere at the Latin Mass. If you live somewhere where there's not a good liturgy and you want to find a spouse, you may have to move. That's one of the things that I had to do. I had to move away from my hometown in Indiana and go all the way across the country to Arizona to find my wife who grew up in Chicago. So if you've already met everyone in your small town like I had, it's probable that you're not meeting your wife where you are because your wife is somewhere else and you may have to move to figure that out. On to the second point. This one may be a little hard for some people to hear, but I think it needs to be said. Maybe you're still single because you're not ready to be married. A lot of people think that getting married is like the magic pill that's going to make them happy all of a sudden. Oh, if I were only married, then I'd be happy. Then I'd be a good person. Then I could conquer this demon of lust. Then I could, then I could, then I could. And that's not the way it works. You need to make sure that you're surrendering your desire for marriage to God entirely. My wife, before we were married, she, she knew she wanted to be married since she was six years old, five years old, very, very young. And she'd been praying for me for over a decade before we even met. But that desire for marriage that she had, she knew that God's will was greater than her desire for marriage. And so a few times before we met, she just had to go into a church and just cry and say, God, I know that I want marriage, but I want what you want even more than I want marriage. And she just totally and completely surrendered her will to God's. And for my own part, before I met my wife and before we started dating, I was in Catholic seminary. Clearly, I was discerning never getting married. And so I had already learned to sacrifice my desire for a family and my desire to be a husband. I had learned to put the Lord's will first in that. And so whenever Jess and I started dating, because she had gone through this exercise and said, Lord, I want what you want even more than I want what I want. And I had done the same thing through going through seminary. 
She and I were able to date for only six weeks before I popped the question and asked her to marry me. And she, thanks be to God, said yes. So once you've made that step and you've realized that your marriage is for the sake of God and your prayers to God are not for the sake of you getting the spouse that you want, once you've made that jump, then discernment can come and go quite quickly and it can happen quite smoothly. And sometimes it only takes six weeks. You should be comfortable with the idea that you love your spouse because you love God. You love your wife because it's God's will for you to love your wife. That does not kill romance. In fact, romance is only truly possible within the context of religion. Because the drama of romance, what's going on there is it's your job to patiently endure your spouse's faults and vice versa. And it's your job to sanctify your spouse and to lead them to heaven. And there's no greater love story than two people teaming up and partnering up in order to make it to heaven and to bring their kids and whoever else will possibly come with them to heaven. True romance is only really possible within the context of religion. So if you haven't made that jump yet and you feel like you're trying to bend God's will to yours, and you haven't sacrificed your will to God yet as regards marriage, it's an indication that you may not be ready to be married. And the third point, and probably the most powerful one on this list, and if you get this right, you'll be able to discern God's will for you very quickly, is this. Pray the rosary for your significant other and for your discernment. One of the promises of the rosary is that Mary will give you signal graces. And I've said this in other videos, but this has been an incredibly important factor in my own life. It's made all of my major decisions in life so much easier. And I've been able to choose what God wants me to choose with confidence because of these signal graces. So if you're discerning and you're trying to find your spouse or maybe already dating and you're trying to figure out if he or she is the one for you, pray the rosary every day and ask Mary to reveal that to you. And she will. And you will know exactly what God has in store for you, exactly what God's plan is for you if you're supposed to marry that person or not, if you're supposed to go out on a date with that person or not. And the last thing I want to say before I give you the free resource I promised is that I just started to run a free online community for men who want to pray the rosary daily. Several people requested that I do this, and so I'm doing it. This community is for men who want to overcome their vices, become husbands and fathers, and become a terror of demons in their own families. If you want to join this community, you can check out the link in the description. I don't accept everyone who applies. I only accept men who are really interested and really willing to pray the rosary daily. Lastly, the resource that I promised is also in the description. It is a map where you can find all of the traditional Latin masses across the country. If you're looking for a godly spouse, that would be where I would recommend to start. Start in the Latin mass community. All of the liturgies are reverent. All the people there are going to know what's going on and see what happens.